Hello, everybody. This is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast Podcast. With me, Elijah Free, the master herbalist at Earth Friend Herb Company. Hello, Elijah. Hi, Martin. It's great to be here again. We've done a lot of these. Yes, we have. We have been in many conversations, you and I, trying yes. to explain to people the principles of health, the principles mm -hmm. of her herbalism, and how the products that you have formulated have helped people. Thank you very much, Martin. As always, I'm just grateful for your expertise and your amazing company. Uh, Martin is uh, our main distributor. I went, uh, Martin and I have worked together for years, folks, and I'm sure if you've ever talked to Martin, you know how great Martin is. Martin is one of the most knowledgeable people I've met, really, out there that you can talk to. So I just want to say thank you so much, Martin for carrying our products, for being such a wonderful exponent of them, for sharing them with everyone and for sharing with today. Thank you. But today I would like to talk to you about your ideas as they relate to genetics mm -hmm. and the current situation with the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to do is I would launch into a slide presentation that we have named genetics and viruses and the possible connection with the COVID-19. We have Elijah Free, the herbal master herbalist, telling us, hey, uh, why don't you speak to why you should be heard? What's your background and how is it that you actually get these insights that elude so many? Thank you for asking. Um, I've talked many years about my practical training. I'll talk about that first on it because this is new for me to actually, in fact, this will be the first time I've ever publicly said that and talked about this. So thank you, Martin, for the opportunity. Uh, I've had very wonderful training. I started off actually back in all the way in 1968. I'm a uh, wartime paramedic on it. Um, I was part of a special training program to replace doctors uh, on battlefield on it. And I was going to fly originally air vacs, but what happened was I decided that the war was not something I was highly into. After that, I went into private practice on that, where I am a master herbalist. I own Earthfriend Herb Company. I am also the formulator and designer and researcher of all of these products. I also have a very wonderful practice where I rebuild uh, broken hands, face and feet, damaged spines, and so on. So... People over the years <clears throat> have called me lots of things, Martin. I often hear um, shaman or medicine man or something like that because I have my whole life abilities that other people don't. So about five or six years ago, I found out that I was in the autistic spectrum, which made a lot of sense. Actually, my true ability is understanding how the universe works, which may sound a little odd, but I have a number of things where the, you could say the universe speaks to me. Obviously, in healing, uh, as an herbalist, the plants speak to me, animals. I mean, all sorts of things speak to me. When I say that um, I understand how the universe works, my main place that I focus this is on the human body, on that. So I work with a number of people with a number of different types of ailments. Now, there's something called MTHFR, which is methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. And I thank you for not putting that all in one word for me to say. That's why we say MTHFR. Now, this is basically a genetic problem here. A high amount of people have this. Uh, some tests show that sometimes up to 30 to 40 percent can actually be affected by this. Now, there's two genes. There's what's called a C677T and an 8, excuse me, A is an apple, 1298C as in Charlie. Now, what happens with this is the C677 is fairly common. Now, when you have these, I myself do, and actually the other gentleman here does too. That's how common it is. So I've been kind of a test case for myself uh, with this, with uh, different aspects. When a person has MTHFR, by the way, I just want to mention, this is something that you can check yourself. You don't need to go to your doctor and pay a ton of money for this. My suggestion is go to Amazon and then look up something. I'm going to spell it M-T-H-F-R-D-R-S period. So that's MTHFR doctors, 
with the abbreviation. Look that up. I think the test is about 129 or 135, and I can tell you if you have it. Yes. Anybody who can do the 23andMe or the Ancestry, those are the full genetic pictures. It comes with all kinds of benefits. And then you can send the data, that's the raw data, you can send it to an interpretation service that can read it for you and tell you back <laughs> what SMPs, SNPs, you may or may not have. Mm -hmm. That's, that exists, that's available. And then there are these specialized tests which focus on this one thing. Exactly, they cost way less too. Well, that, no? you know, the whole the whole 23andMe is a $100 test. Really? The interpretation is like 39 bucks. So it does not necessarily mean that you're gonna spend uh, much more money doing it that way. I consider it a game changer whenever I find anyone that has it. And I always say, congratulations, now you know what's going on. So what happens with this is I began to read a whole bunch of the symptomology that went on. So for example, low vitamin D. I have to tell you, every person I have ever worked with, including myself, has always had very low um, uh, would you call it a vitamin D? Now, a vitamin D level should not go below, if we're going to look at it in numbers, below 60. 40 is not good. I have, honest to God, Martin, seen patients with eight and nine with really bad MTHFR. They can barely move. They are so sick. I would like to butt in here with the following, right? The vitamin D is actually generated in the body by sunshine. So exposure to sun is what helps us. In fact, I think a swimsuit clad person 15 minutes in the sun is worth about 10,000 international units of vitamin D3, mm -hmm. which I think is about the maintenance dose for a human body. When people are sicker, we actually push it a little higher, but only with testing. And you need to be tested every four to six months if you're on a high amount of vitamin D, by the way, folks. It yeah. can build up in your liver and not be a good thing. So you have to be careful. Now, And I wanted to say, and the more pigment you have in your skin, the harder it is for the sun to penetrate and start making the D3. So mm -hmm. the darker your skin, the more sun exposure you need to get there. Mm -hmm. And with MTHFR, part of the problem, which we're going to talk about what it does soon, is that it inhibits the absorption of numerous things, including chemical signals. So part of how the D is created is the body gets a uh, chemical signal. It then utilizes available materials and takes the vitamin D that's in the body and do this and synthesizes and all of that. But what happens is this. Now, we're going to talk about we're gonna take a side step over here, and we're gonna talk about three things that happen in the body. Now, this is called cell membrane permeability. That's the first thing we're gonna talk about. Now, what that means is, how do things get into your cells? With MTHFR, it's really hard to get things in the cells. We've seen people that we've treated for things very simply when they come, when folks come with MTHFR, it's a very different ball game. So basically, when we find a person with MTHFR, we start off differently than we do. If we even begin to think of it, I won't even progress without a test on it because otherwise, most things just don't work correctly. So with improper cell, mem cell membrane permeability, what basically happens is things cannot get into the cells. No, the, on it, the cell wall itself becomes less opaque. Things can't go through. But what also happens is that signals, chemical signals, which tell the cells how to act, become skewed, wrong, and are mistaken and give wrong signals. So that's one of the most things that happen is this with MTHFR is that stuff can't get in the cells. So when we talk about then a cure for something or something to help a person, you could say you have a person here and then you have me here. I have MTHFR quite significantly. The person who does not have that 
everything will pass beautifully into their cells margin. It's not a problem. It's just like light going right through a beautifully clean window. That's it. You got a person with MTHFR, now that window is really dirty. Okay, maybe there's a curtain hung in there. Nothing can get through or very little can get through. So what happens is the signal tells the body to do the wrong thing. Now, when that happens, the disease or illness or problem is actually called autoimmune disease because what it does, it gives the body the wrong signal, the body does the wrong thing, the cell does the wrong thing, and now it's fighting against itself. The ultimate source of that basically causes horrible illness and often death. Well, literally, when they call it autoimmune, it's because the body is now trying to self-destroy. In other words, it got a signal that something was going on when it wasn't. It's like saying, hey, there's somebody, there's a group of people coming in your house with guns and everything like that, you know, and it's not. It's your wife's over there with a cup of coffee, okay? But yet somebody tells you that and you go out in the room and you think something terrible is happening and you do something terrible. So your body is told to do something wrong. Your brain may be telling it correctly, but by the time it gets from the, the natural part of that all the way to the cell, things have changed, become skewed, confused, and as a result, the cells do the wrong thing, you see, with that. Now, basically, then, we've got three problems. That's the first one. The second one, then, literally, is the signal itself, which we just described, so that's two of them. The third one is neural toxins, and this is absolutely devastating. Uh, it's basically when the cell function is disrupted, inflammation rises on that. Now, they talk about a cytokine uh, storm is that so much inflammation occurs during the COVID-19 virus is that for some people, it destroys the tissue in their body. It goes into the cells and absolutely just racks it. When I was sick in bed for all that time, my wife had mildly low energy. That was it. A cup of coffee would have taken care of it, and she coughed a little bit for a day or so. Yeah, you, yeah, gave, a few, yeah, you gave a few examples of this, uh, which was quite interesting to see that in the same family, like husband and wife, yes. husband mm -hmm. uh, having a horrible progression of the illness while the wife is watching in amazement that there's nothing going on with her. Yes, yes. we actually had an observation of eight people okay, on it that I got to observe. And it was interesting, uh, it's a very small amount, obviously, and you know, it's not a study or anything, it's all anecdotal. But in my household, my wife does not have MTHFR, I do, I got really sick. Two other households, both the women in there, they're patients of mine and they were diagnosed using that service, both have MTHFR and their husbands don't. They got just as sick as I did and one of them actually got sicker their husbands didn't notice a thing. In a household with an adult daughter and an adult mother, obviously, on that, they both have been diagnosed medically, okay, with the report, they both got sick as a dog. Yeah. So out of that, then you could go, well, one did and one didn't in each household, only the people in the households with that. So it's anecdotal with it, but it points towards that. And when we only get like eight or 10, in a number, but it's 100%, that's where you begin to look. That's when you go, oh, look at this, there's only eight people. Well, that's nothing. Yeah, but it's 100%. Well, All eight of, acted yeah. perfectly as they should have. Yeah, well, a lot of medical studies are done on a dozen anyway, so it's not yeah. like your number is too low. And so what's interesting is that the uh, MTHFR is expressed either through one parent, two parents, or none. Exactly. But the words are used uh, for that homozygous is that you have it from both. Mm -hmm. Zygous, you have it from one and, yes. or none. One thing that could be said also is that uh, there is epigenetics. Mm. For any gene to be uh, activated, it actually needs to be turned on. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that even though we may have this uh, SNP, the mutation, it does not necessarily have to express unless we are living in a lifestyle that causes Exactly. It. I never had hardly any, any symptoms until I was actually poisoned by a dentist. I was sick for two years. Yeah, that has been my experience. I was fine until 
I was made toxic with mercury, also, yeah. also a dentist. Yeah. So how does it actually work in the body? So I'm sure many of you have read or heard that Afro-American folks and um, Hispanic folks have a higher rate of uh, getting the COVID-19 virus and also of dying. So I found a study on this. So I went, well, let's see what happens. So I found the study and sure enough, blood folates, which are controlled obviously by the body and the chemistry of it, when you have MTHFR, those folates drop anywhere from a little bit to remarkably dramatic. They found in this test that Afro, they, it was actually women audit, but it works the same with women or men. It just the test, that, the one that I found happened to have been done with women on that, just to be 100% clear on all of that. They found that every African-American woman had folates incredibly lower than Caucasian women and Hispanic women fell between the um, rates of the Afro-American and the Caucasians. So the lower the folates, the more you are susceptible to being affected by the MTHFR in your body. And it makes you far more susceptible to other problems. So it makes you apparently way more susceptible. Now, interestingly enough, we have here body temperature and sticky mucosa. I have found that people with MTHFR, right across the board, most of them have some type of thyroid problem, usually a hypothyroid, which is a lower thyroid. My body temperature, for example, falls at 96.8 on that with the MTHFR. So if I'm 98.6, actually, I have a temperature on that. So if I show statistically normal, which actually they've changed that a bit now, they've got a little more variation in the theme, but... I think it's probably because of the vast amount of people with something like MTHFR that show lower body temperatures. And if it's like, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 or 25 percent of the entire population, that's a big chunk that does not have a body temperature that falls within it. The other thing that I noticed, and this is very interesting, this goes back decades. There was a person with um, live blood microscope. That's what it was, live blood microscope, and you could also do saliva on it. So they were doing different ones, and he did my saliva, and he said he's never seen anything like this. It was the stickiest stuff he's ever seen. Now, I don't know really anything about that much, you know, as myself. However, think of it this way. So there's a COVID-19 virus floating around in the air. Somebody just coughed all over you, okay? They weren't good. They didn't wear a mask or whatever. You have low blood folates. You have a low blood body temperature, which the virus likes. You then have mm -hmm. sticky mucosa. With the sticky mucosa, the low body temperature and low blood folates, you have a perfect place over there for the coronavirus virus to, excuse me, the COVID virus. Yeah, coronavirus, there we go, COVID-19, on that to live and to thrive. A person without MTHFR has normal blood folates, they have a normal body temperature, and their mucosa is not sticky. So they have a place where it cannot it get entrapped on that and have a, uh, be able to, um, what do you call it, just thrive. Well, I would say that this has to do with the uh, permeability of these uh, membranes, right? Exactly. If you, That's all part of it. Yeah. If your membrane is good, that you will prevent the transmission of the... Uh, Should. Yes, the virus cannot get in, but if you are challenged at, in this department, then they are more likely to get get through. Exactly. So if we went back, okay, to different things, you know, SARS and all of those, would that hold true? Is that all of these viruses, the people who get so sick and die from them, the people who are like me that would wish they were dying at the moment, and then they're the people who don't get hit at all, we would most likely find a perfect model. Now, this is what I thought could help. Now, there's no cure for it at the moment. I'm not saying I have anything, okay? I got things that may help with MTHFR, but that's not really the main thing at this point. What I'm trying to, propose is a three-point system that would allow 
people to be able to function by knowing your levels of MTHFR. So it's a simple swab test. So imagine lots and lots of people get the MTHFR test. Okay. So you've got then, I broke it into three categories. There's the first one, which means you don't have it or a very small amount. There's the middle, which is small amount to a reasonably good amount, which is where I would fall. Then there's the people who are very stricken by that. Now, if you put this into three groups, the first group could probably go out and be safe. You know, be careful with the mask and all that kind of stuff. But they probably would be okay because they don't have the MTHFR on it. Uh, you find the people who don't. Did you get sick? No. Okay, well that, that's a pretty easy way to do it. You just ask an awful lot of people after testing for it. So the next group then would need something, say like I, <clears throat> I'm very careful, I wear a mask and gloves when I go out and all of that. You would probably be okay to a degree, but would need to be quite careful. The third group would, would be the group that would have the really main problems, Martin, in there and might need to stay home, work from home and things like that or be exceptionally careful until something is developed to help with this. Right. So this is what I see, so just finish here. This is what I proposed with all of this. Now, what would happen is as people went into the three groups is I came up with seven points on this. So you would develop a program. You could have your own app actually, you know, on your phone and, or whatever and just put in, I have MTHR and I'm in the second group. Folates, okay. Number two is I have low folates. Okay, that makes certain numbers in this group. My age, okay, well, I'm 70. Okay, myself on that. So that gives me points against that also too. Racial background, okay, I might be Afro-American, I might be Hispanic, in which case then I have a tendency towards that more. So that would have to be found out. Prior medical conditions and uh, prescription drugs, or drugs for street drugs or whatever, that would be part of that. The level of inflammation and finally substance and food intake. That could very possibly give us really nice to find three groups of people in there who, for the time being, until something else occurs, would allow us to have more of an open society. I would imagine that making a, um, oh, what would you call it, a vaccine would be very difficult because of the fact you're treating th three quite different types of metabolic conditions. The um, drug Paquinol, or the longer name of hydro, whatever, with the quinine and stuff, why it worked sometimes and why it didn't, it's also used for people with lupus that have autoimmune problems. So this is what I'm thinking, is that what it did is it allayed the autoimmune symptomology in the people that had that, okay, bad MTHFR. So they appeared to be getting better, but they were literally getting better from the MTHFR and not from the COVID-19. So if you had 24 test people, right, and suppose you had a large amount of people with MTHFR in there, it may actually show positive. The next group, you may have hardly anybody and you're going to show a negative with that. Well, I can confirm that from, you know, my work with people. It starts with understanding biological individuality. There you go. If you don't, if you don't take into account the uh, metabolic dominances and the uh, biological differences, when you're trying to treat people by the numbers instead of by their responses, you're going to have a problem. Like the, the, the model of the standard of care, which thinks or assumes that everybody's identical to one another, is doomed, just doomed. Very very. I've been in, I'll be 70 in the fall, Martin. I have almost all of my life. I've been able to view a lot. <laughs> and with my mutant ability, so to speak, yes. it's allowed me to correlate data in a wonderful and very profound way. Again, that, that leads to a lot of my work. So yes, it's individual, but we can still, I believe, get people into three groups. And really, it's only the people on the higher end of number two, which would be like me on it. And then the folks in number three that we really have to watch out for, you yes. know, so that really does that. Number one, again, you know, we still are going to need all the social distancing because the people with the fabulous systems that don't have this can still carry that and affect the poor people like myself who don't have that great system. 
So we're going to all have to work together. But I feel this is a great plan. We're not talking anything. We're not trying to make vaccines or anything at this point. It's This would be step one is let's get the society sorted out, and then we can just move ahead. Right. And all we have to do is treat people with MTHFR. Of course, so, you're, you're speaking on the assumption that the system is interested in healing people as opposed to treating people and making money. Yeah. So what would you have to help people repair the chemical chains, deal with the toxic? Before we start talking about my formulas, I just want to make sure people understand this is not a cure for the COVID-19. It will not prevent you from getting this. There are no claims for this. So people need to understand that we're not talking about this is going to make you okay. So everyone who's listening after this, just know this is not something that Martin and I are saying is going to help you prevent this or anything like that whatsoever. This is still all anecdotal at this point until proper studies are done. Well, like I said, what we have right now would be the cell ease and the cell ease support okay. on that. We're in research right now, Martin, for this, is that we've learned a lot. But we'll have something soon. Like I said, we have something that's working. It's just a lot of formulas to get something to work. It's really complicated because, first of all, you need something to, well, neutralize the MTHFR, okay, or to even get into the cell. Then you need a support formula for that to help that to move through because you can't put them both in one bottle. It's just too many herbs. Okay. okay, with that. And when you do that, you can go, well, I'll take twice as much. It doesn't work that way. Okay, well, on my end of things, uh, we find that the uh, bioavailable sulfur, MSM, uh -huh. is very helpful in, uh, in improving the cellular membrane permeability. I can never express the importance of sulfur in a cell. Um, but we make a garlic syrup. It's a remedy from old, old, old England. It takes all afternoon to make it, and it smells, <laughs> our place smells just like you're inside a garlic piece of garlic yourself. But the worst part of it is you can't ship it anywhere. You can't do anything with it. I, patients would come, they'd have to bring refrigerated bags in ice bags to take it home. <laughs> but I just wanted to mention the sulfur. Oh my God, I cannot express the importance of sulfur to the cell. Yeah, and the second thing that we have had a lot of success <coughs> with is lecithin. Lecithin mm. is the uh, universal uh, emulsifier. And uh, most or all cells are really, the membrane is formed out of the bilipid layer. And the materials that are, uh, needed for that come in in the lecithin so when we supplement that for some reason the body seems to build itself better very nice well that also though will help with neurotransmitting neurotransmitting so that would help to override the inc oh of course that would help to override the incorrect signal on that by boosting the strength of the neurotransmitter from its actual transmitter head right cool Okay, so any questions? If you have questions, which I hope you do, you can contact us, myself at life-enthusiast.com, 866-543-3388, Elijah at earthfriendherb.com, and the phone number is 831-325-3300. And a good way to contact me is through email if you like, which would be Elijah at earthfredherb.com. We get pretty busy, so we often ask if people could text or email if they like to chat and stuff, because sometimes I'm hard to get or hard to get back to people. Thank you. All right, Elijah, this has been interesting, stimulating, educational. I uh, thank you very much for participating, and I hope it's appreciated out there in the crowd. Mm -hmm.